All right, let's bring in our guy, Adam Hogue, as we get our Bears report today. By the way, Bregs, so fill in the blank real fast here. Bear down. Chicago Bears. Make every play clear the way to victory. Bear down. Chicago Bears. Yeah, thank you. Now, just one word. I, I do the Bears part, but I just keep on, you know, it starts, we wrap up our stadium talk. Those, those are the words in the song. All right. Hogue, good to see you, my friend. <laughs> I'm surprised he knows those words with all the Cubs gear he's been wearing every day this week. Yeah, we're sure going to miss you guys in Nashville. What? The White Sox. Not They're going to Nashville. You're going to Nashville uh, with the White Sox. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean really- there is a better chance I go see a White Sox game in Nashville than on the south side right now. That is oh, accurate. Boy. Okay. All right. Let's let's stay on focus here. We started off the show with a zillion topics. We and one that we haven't you know leaned into much so far is, is Justin Fields and his comments yesterday. So Ho, why don't why don't you lead us into that? And your why, why don't we let Kentucky Bears fan lead us into that? Okay, we can do that. Kentucky Bear fan four ninety nine. Someone tell Hogue to put on Justin Fields tape versus Northwestern and Purdue and see if he's quote blown away. Wow. Going at Hogue and his Caleb Williams, and, and, and yes, Fields wasn't great in those games. So what do you, I don't understand your point, though, Kentucky Bears fan, as much as I appreciate the Super Chat. I, I, I think this is a gotcha moment where he might have gotten himself. <laughs> yeah, he's just trying to say, well, if you're going to only look at Caleb's bad games, those were Justin's bad games. That's right. the gotcha he's trying to pull from there. But do those tapes prove that those flaws were actually legitimate because here the Bears are looking for their next quarterback, maybe. So I'm not exactly sure what the point is here. I will say this um, for the one millionth time. Those are not the only two tapes that I will watch or quite frankly have watched because what have I been doing this morning? I've actually been watching a little Caleb Williams this morning uh, in in addition to another number of other things. Also, I did not ask uh, the people I consulted what are the two worst games I can watch? I asked, what are the two games that will give the best test for the NFL? Because you have to project this to the next level. And those two games were Notre Dame and Utah. So I didn't go into that. Let me watch the two worst games. No, it was give me the two best tests. Um, and I don't need to go back and watch the Northwestern tape. I saw uh, I, I was at that game at the Big Ten Championship, and Northwestern did a phenomenal job. I was right down there on the sideline. It was a great game, great defense. It was a good test for Justin Fields, and I think some of the, the uh, problems in that game, holding onto the ball a little bit too long and skipping some reads from time to time, have translated to the NFL. You know what else has translated to the NFL? The year before when I saw Justin Fields put up, I think it was, Carm, what was it? 500 points against Northwestern in Evanston on that Friday night the year before. So a lot of the good, a lot of the bad, the same things. And oh, by the way, as we lead into this Justin Fields conversation, I am not out on Justin Fields. I don't want to be out on Justin Fields. I loved what Justin Fields had to say yesterday. I think a lot of what he had to say yesterday is exactly why the Bears should not be in a hurry to move on from Justin Fields. Um, So I don't think this story is over yet, and I don't think it should be. All right, so he's up there yesterday. Our guy, Herb Howard, friend of the show, uh, employee of the show, asked him the question, you know, hey, uh, do you think you've been treated fairly? And he's like, you know, basically life's not fair. And, I mean, I can read the quote here, but he he, he just he goes and it's like, you know, I, I p- basically put in my trust in God and whatever happens, happens. And nothing that you can do to me here is, I mean, it, it's part of the reason why, at least for me, I don't know where you guys are. I, I think I know where you guys are at. But for me, it's like the dude has always been incredibly likable. There's nothing to dislike about this guy. So I thought he conducted himself brilliantly yesterday. It was, you could actually feel him, which is, it's just it it makes you like him even more. That's how I that's what I came out of from yesterday's press conference more than anything else. Yeah, I, I mean I appreciated what he had to say. Um and, and the truth is too that Justin Fields is not operating um from a leave it all on the line, this is my last, you know, hurrah with the Bears or wherever, like the 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 final few games of Mitch Trub- of the Mitch Trubisky era. Okay. Mitch Trubisky was headed towards backup land, and we all knew that. 
Justin Fields, I think, can speak confidently at the podium right now, knowing that maybe unless he just totally bombs out in these final five games and it just goes horribly, which I don't think is how it's going to play out, whether it's with the Bears next year or another team, he's probably still going to be starting NFL games. There are going to be teams that want his talents. Um, and he may, he's never going to say this publicly because of the kind of guy he is and the type of teammate he is, but deep down inside, he, he may want that. He may want to go somewhere else where he's in a better situation where he can, you know, have more success. Um, but I did appreciate the question from her. And personally, I don't, I don't necessarily think Justin Fields has been treated unfairly here as much as I think he's just put been put in an unfair position a lot of the times. Um, most notably his rookie year, then second, his second year, which he just didn't have a lot of talent around. And then this year, it hasn't been perfect. He's definitely had more opportunities to show what he can do, and sometimes he's taken advantage of that, and sometimes he hasn't. Yeah, I mean, I think when Fields came in, it was a big difference between Mitch where he was booed out the gates. He was booed at the Bulls game. We embraced Fields. We were excited when Fields was drafted. There wasn't booing going on. But then it started to build up here these last couple of years as the pressure rises to become what we hope he can be. And you we're asking Paris Johnson Jr. and, and, and C.J. Stroud and people at the Combine like, oh, what do you think of people that call him a running quarterback? And that narrative starts to go around. So I guess my long-winded question here, or just kind of point is, to what Fields said yesterday, I think that points to how he has more of a demeanor that can handle the Chicago pressure. And do you think that that would be much harder on Caleb Williams, who's shown emotion after a game, doesn't want to talk to the media after a game. Like, that's what I think some Bears fans are starting to balance as well. Yeah, and I think it's a valid question that um, is going to end up being a, a very huge storyline for Caleb Williams, um, and it'll probably go in a direction that is overboard and a little bit unfair. Yep. Um, but if we can have it, you know, at a reasonable level right now on December 7th is already a question I've heard from some NFL people I've talked to. They're worried about this is this is uh, this is not something that the media is making a big deal about right now just because he didn't talk to the media. It's something that was a, a, immediately flagged by some NFL teams already to be like, well, wait a minute, we got to dig into this a little bit more. You know what? What's why didn't he talk to the media? Is this going to be a problem, especially in a market like Chicago? And bringing it back to Justin Fields, 100%. I think this is something he's handled very, very well. Has it been uh, you know, an A-plus the entire way? No. I mean, he did have that thing earlier this year where he sort of called out the coaching and then had to backtrack it a little bit. As we said that day during that show, I love that he said what he said. I hated that he came back and backtracked. That was yep. the pro I had the problem with the backtrack, not with what he said. Um, but I think overall, 99% of this journey, which has been um, uneven and not completely fair to him from the positions the Bears have put him in, he's handled it with grace. And I think he's handled the pressure of being the Bears quarterback very, very well um, to the point that, like, do you guys trust him? Going in this game against the Lions, like I mean, do you just do you just trust him to give your team a chance to win the game? No, I do not. Okay, I, Braggs, I, do I, you? I think he's talented enough to win any game he plays, but yeah. I never know what to expect with this Bears team with Justin Fields. Well, that but yeah, and, and I and that's that's a fair answer. I completely disagree with Carm's answer. Carm's treating this like it's Tim Boyle playing for the Jets no, 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 last week. No, no, it, well, let me, where let me you don't. No, 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 I'm being serious because this is the point I want to make here with Justin Fields. Justin Fields does what Braggs just said. He gives you an opportunity to not only win every football game he plays in, but be the reason why they win. Does it, does it happen? Is that how it plays out? Not necessarily, but that's the feeling you have going into the game. There are way too many other quarterback situations right now around the league where you do not feel any faith whatsoever in that quarterback taking the field to give you the chance to win. Justin Fields still does that. Yeah, but uh, let me clarify. 
I'm not saying that he can't do it. I'm not saying that he won't do it. I'm saying that, and it's what he talked about. He's working on consistency. I have no idea if he's going to play great or not play great, and neither does he. Neither do the Bears, and that's why we're in this spot, because he can be phenomenal, and then you can have a game where in Minnesota where he holds on to the ball too long and gets hurt and, and ends up throwing 58 yards, and, 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 and Tyson Bajan's called on to try to save the day, and he nearly damn-ass did for the record. But, so that's what, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> he had to you know, it, you, 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 don't, <laughs> you don't know what you're going to get. If you knew what you were going to get, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Along, obviously, along with the the bigger the bigger reason why we're having this conversation, and this is a really we're doing this every day, and I'm just I'll, maybe I'll stop saying it every day, but it's a really hard decision for the Bears. You have the number one overall pick. It is a tough call when you've got a quarterback at the top of the draft that some are saying is it you know a generational talent, and I, I get the and I'll, I'll end with this. I'm sorry, a little long winded here. The Caleb thing. Is, I think is a huge deal to what you're teeing up, Hogue. Because if if you're having some slightly odd moments at USC with the media, you're a college kid. I'm going to give you a pass, no problem. But it but it is something to at least pay a little bit of attention to. And then you factor what he's going to be walking into here. Justin Fields is enormously popular with the fan base. The, the every time I say anything negative, the uh, the chat is coming at me like I mean more than anything I'll ever say. The, the Bears fans love Justin. If if you trade Justin and he goes off somewhere else and is playing well, and Caleb Williams comes in here right, and is struggling, a lot of pressure. It is going to be an enormous amount of heat on that dude. And he's gonna and you you have, I think if you're Ryan Poles, you do have to factor in can this dude handle that situation because that is on the table. Well, and, and I just want to be clear here. I'm not saying that the Bears should 100% keep Justin Fields. I understand why it's that conversation and because you could have the opportunity to take Caleb Williams or Drake May. I guess what I'm trying to get at, though, is this is, this is to me at least, not even anywhere close to what it was like with Mitch Trubisky it, it, you know, towards the end where they had to move on. And the only reason why this is a conversation I guess is my point is because of the draft capital the Bears will probably have. Right. If their first pick, they might have two picks. If the, if their first pick was eight and let's just say twelve, like let's say those are the two picks. How many people are going to be sitting here making the argument that the Bears should trade up for Caleb Williams? I think that they would. Everyone would almost unanimously be like, "No, just use those two picks on some really good players to get, to to go around Justin Fields." And the only thing we'd be talking about is whether or not they're going to pick up the fifth year option. It, it it's. I I just sort of feel like this Justin Fields conversation has gotten a little out of hand because of the draft capital the Bears have. Correct. Now they they do have that capital. And it is a very unique situation that the Bears are in, and it's a hundred percent a road they got to go down to talk about. But I just feel like this world of us evaluating what the Bears should do next at quarterback is sometimes evolving into like Justin Fields isn't that good. And I just like to remind everyone if they let him go, he's going to be starting somewhere else next year. And and, and it's definitely a fear of mine. And I know I've said this many times now that he's going to be pretty damn good wherever he goes. All right, so then to put you on the spot, maybe we can talk about this later, but I want to hear from you. You say you haven't, you're not out on fields yet. From what you're hearing, we're hearing other beat reporters saying, I think they're going to move off of fields if they have the number one pick. From what you're feeling or hearing vibes around Hallis Hall, do you think they're still evaluating him these last five games or have they already made their decision? I... Uh, I do not think that decision has been finalized. Neither do I. There, there were moments earlier this season where I wondered or I sort of did get that vibe, not necessarily on vibes coming out of the building as much as my own intuition sort of covering this league as long as I have. It just sort of felt like inevitable that it his time might be done here. And that there, there's a lot of logic pointing to that still being the case. Um, but I don't think that they've completely shut the door or closed the idea. There's just too many variables, including who's the head coach. What is, you know, who's the offensive coordinator? Are you making changes there? 
Are you bringing everyone back? Does he have to learn a new offense? If you bring in new coaches, what do they think about him? And it's just not a decision that needs to be made right now. So they may be leaning one way or the other, but if they had completely closed the door or made up their mind one way or the other 100%, I would actually say that that's completely irresponsible. Right. That's you. You use the games. You 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 get all the information possible. You don't know that officially anywhere close to officially that you have the number one overall pick. You 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 play it out. Uh, that'd be the logical thing to do. Uh, let's move on to Getzy, who spoke today. Hogue. He he uh, he tried to explain. It's it's weird to think about because the Bears have been in the bye week for forever now, um, and the Bears beat the Vikings, but of course they didn't score a touchdown and they threw eight thousand screens. And he was asked about that today. Can you relay what he said? Yeah. So um, I, I I feel like a lot of these Getzy press conferences have been very very similar. Um, he, you know, to his credit, he walks up there every single week, regardless of what the results have been, and certainly talks like he's just got all the confidence in the world. He's like Bill Walsh. The guy's had so much success. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and then he, he – in and I actually don't have a problem with it as much as some other people have, but he's not afraid to point out when things are necessary – like some things fall on the quarterback and not on the play caller – so it sort of happened again today. Now, he praised Justin Fields for his decision-making throughout the game, but he did point out that there were one or two plays where Justin – let me rewind a little bit. A lot of the screens you saw in that game were options. They were RPOs where the quarterback has the, has the opportunity to either hand the ball off or throw it. Okay, it was a very heavy RPO game plan, and the throws by design were quick because they're bringing heavy pressure. So what does that mean? It means you're usually going horizontal to try to set up screens. As I've said many times since the Vikings game, totally understand that game plan. It just seemed like there was too many of them, right? Well, Getze was not afraid to point out today that a lot of that was because of Vikings are doing this, quarterback has the option, and because of what the Vikings were doing, the quarterback was throwing a lot of those instead of just handing the ball off. So they weren't necessarily all called that way. It was the way the play designs uh, or the plays were designed and how the quarterback read them. And then the follow-up question, which was a good follow-up question. Okay, gotcha there, coach. Basically, how many of those did Justin screw up, though? Like, was he really supposed to throw all the ones that he did? And Getzy said, for the most part, he did fine, but there were definitely one or two where he probably should have just handed the ball off instead of throwing it. And those are probably the ones where they just, you know, three screens in a row, probably one of those shouldn't have been thrown, right? Um, and, and maybe it wasn't blocked as well out there. So I get the game plan. I actually like the game plan. And I think it's also, from my standpoint, completely fair for the OC to point out and sort of defend himself. Hey, they weren't all supposed to be thrown. They just were. And he he did give Justin a lot of credit for how he played in the decision-making overall. I, I just think that's crazy, though, because so you're saying they're all RPOs, and the decision of to, to hand it off or pass is predicated on what you're seeing pre-snap, but they disguise things so well, how the hell are you supposed to do that? So you're, there has to be a, another game plan wrinkle that you can do outside of RPOs to help fight against these these disguised looks like getting in 12 personnel and running the damn ball whether and not worrying about what you see in front of you hat on a head and bust their ass well just to clarify i think um that there's more built into this than just pre-snap so pre-snap you're usually going at play a or play b based on your read when you talk about the rpo it has more to do with him reading one player. So that accounts for what you're talking about, Braggs, which is, okay, is the read player really not coming and said he backs off? Well, if he backs off, you're probably giving the running back the ball. So there's still, it's still built into the play design to read it after the snap, and you're typically reading one player. Um, and so I think it's a combination of both. And so the one or two times in a game where the bears had the ball, by the way, for most of the game. So there were a lot of plays Uh, the one or two times where Justin didn't do it properly. um, 
which every quarterback is going to screw up one or two every game. It was probably just a, a well-played, you know, whether that end guy that he's reading surfs it well or wh whatever. I don't know. I don't have a play off the top of my head. But whatever it is, um, you know, that stuff is going to happen. Adam Hogue. <laughs> he, he doesn't. Re reporting. Well, hold on. Just a I can ask out. myself questions, too. It's just Adam. Rel it's like, Adam, it's relax. like what do you think about it's like, Robbie Gold retiring. Relax, relax. It's like Mark Carmen woke up from a coma yes, or something. He did, He's yeah. just like Adam, Adam Hogue. <laughs> okay, just, just okay. He had to remind himself who the guest was. I, I don't know where I, I just you We're got me. Alzheimer's maybe. You took me it's down okay. a, you took me down a whole Getsy thing. I was in my head about it. I, but I don't want to talk about Getsy anymore. So I just said your name. My bad. All right, go ahead. Oh, ask yourself a question about Robbie Gold, who's retiring today. Greatest kicker in the history of the Bears. Should never have not been a Bear. Never missed a, a field goal or an extra point in the playoffs, which is insane on 68 combined attempts. Calling it a career. I think some Bears fans still want him to come back and be a Bear, even though Cairo Santos has been Cairo God. Shout out to Robbie Gold. You were amazing. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's going to remain one of the um – to me, at least, it's on towards the top of the list of blunders the Bears ha have made since I've been covering this team, and they made plenty of them. Most of them have to do with with coaches, but um, you know the the way in which they they let Robbie go, um, and sh obviously should not have, and then it ended up costing them a playoff victory. When you talk about the fact that he ends his career having never missed a kick in the playoffs, um, it, it's just hard to swallow, right? But in celebration of the Bears' all-time points leader, um, I thought it was interesting. If you guys get a chance to read what he wrote in the Players' Tribune announcing his retirement, um, he sort of asked himself a question in there, uh, just like I just did. Uh, what Basically, what was his favorite kick? And he's like, it's not easy to answer, but he said the, the divisional walk-off field goal at Lambeau Field in 2022. Oh, yeah. um, but his reasoning, granted, he's on the 49ers there, but his reasoning actually had to do he with the fact that he just loves Bears fans so much. And it was like he was getting two victories in one because not only does he get the walk-off field goal uh, in a playoff game, which is incredible for him in his career, he's also sticking it to the Packers and making Bears fans all over Chicago happy as well, at, at, you know, at the same exact time. So I just thought that was a really cool answer to that question and um i'm sure a lot of bears fans can appreciate that too oh, yeah. and also they all wish he was doing it for the bears instead of the 49ers but that's why he's a fucking legend we love him yeah. for it the it my favorite robbie gold memory yeah. was in uh the playoffs in 2006 2005 2006 season where he hit the walk off in overtime against the seahawks and i was hammered at my friend tom's house and then I went outside and, and was yelling, we won, as I was yakking on the side of the house. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Okay. We won! It was literally can, like that. Can, I, can, I go, can I go in a completely opposite direction <laughs> for my appreciation of Robbie Gold? Um, because <laughs> definitely does not have to do with a kick he made while I was hammered drunk puking on the side of a building. Um, Great time. No, uh, you know, Robbie and I actually probably had more of a relationship after he had, he left Chicago, and I just always appreciate um, – and he, it started when he was still with the Bears, but um, for all the stuff my son was going through, uh, whether it was one of his surgeries or, or – uh, when he was in the NICU for as long as he was when he was born, uh, Robbie would, that, and that's the thing that I don't know everyone knows about him, but he was always like sometimes literally the first person to check in and just, you know, see how James was doing. Um, so, you know, he, he didn't always have the smoothest relationship with the media at times, but uh, you know, behind the scenes, there's, there's no question where, you know, his priorities are and the type of guy he is. And um, obviously he goes down as one of the best bears ever. So, I'm a little surprised he's not playing. To be honest, this year I thought he would. I thought he could find uh, you know another situation. There's been plenty of kickers hurt, but I think also, um, as he pointed out in his retirement letter, you know his priorities are. He's been away from his family a ton since he was out west with the 49ers because um, he's still raising his kids here in this area, 
and will continue. So he's a, he's a Chicagoan now and, um, and, and basically has been since he got here. So, But all the credit in the world to Robbie Gold for an outstanding career. I'm pretty sure he was in a suite for the double doink. Like he was at the game in yeah. a suite. That's yeah, he I was said. there. I remember that. Um, Sickening. And I think all his kids were dressed in Bears gear, if I remember right. And, um, yeah, that also makes that moment even more sickening yeah. that there was somebody in the stands who could have made the kick. Right. $5 from Keith Chow in the uh, Super Chat world. Thank you, Keith. Want to know if Kevin thinks gold should get into the Hall of Fame ah. before Hester? Also for Braggs, if Batman returns and a Christmas movie or the, if the is, best. Oh, is Batman returns. Get some glasses, man. No, yeah, I guess so. Um, it's not glasses. It's just jumping ahead. Is Batman Returns and Christmas movie or the best Christmas movie? It is the best Christmas movie. But yeah, um, Carm, I, I found out yesterday yeah, that I, I want to know. Does he think Robbie do you think Gold, Gold should be in over Hester, Hester in the Hall of Fame? No, I don't. I found out yesterday that a freaking kicker won MVP of the NFL one year. Yeah, where have you been, man? That's like old news. 1982. What was his name? Mark Mosley. Mark had a nice Mosley. Little, had a nice little... A uh, kicker perm. won MVP of the National Football League, but we're not going to put Hester in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. I yelled at Hogue about that yesterday, too. I, I, he just got, like, caught astray on it. Uh, okay. I, 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 great. Um, I would like to just shout out... My last thing on Robbie Gold is I'd like to just tell him that he did not help me when he first got to the town, and I was doing demo work to try to get myself a reporter job at... Now ESPN 1000, and I called him Robbie Gould. And Whoops. afterwards, I realized that it was wrong, and I wrote Adam Delavitt a, a note saying, I'm sorry that in my demo tape I said Gould. I now know it's Gould. My bad. And then uh, I, I think he apparently played that voice message for everyone. This guy's trying to get a job here, and he doesn't even know the kicker's name. So Gould killed me. I could have been a 1000 employee back in the day. Would have rather been in GN anyway. It worked out, worked out better. Yeah, you Sounds like you killed yourself there. That was yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. But, but you mean now you're why, with why, why, me. can't, why? Why do you have to have a you in your name? Just, just who, who, what type of family is this? No one knows how to say my last name. Is it my fault? Yeah, no, but it's Merrill. It's Merrill's fault. It is Merrill Hodges' fault because he doesn't know how to say his own name. I mean, I don't know. The Hogue family probably needs to should have worked out some things too. Let's be honest. All right, uh, you know, somebody should. Why couldn't that be H O A G? Why do we got to make it hard? You would have been. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Last one, Adam Hogue. You wanted to talk about something very important that, um, yeah, Jim damn ass Harbaugh with an $11 million a year, five year extension. And I like to apologize yesterday. I got it wrong. AI got me. There was a, uh, on Harbaugh with his Iowa thing. I'm an idiot. I own it. I swear I read it as a quote and didn't see like this like, stupid ass mouth thing, which was obvious that it was AI. So I apologize to Jim and Jim's family. You didn't say anything bad about my alma mater. Appreciate you, Jim Harbaugh. Now, do you think he's staying at Michigan or what? Because he's, he's apparently doesn't want to sign a letter saying that he won't flirt with the NFL if he signs this deal and he hasn't signed it yet. Yeah, there's been a couple of reports this morning, uh, including one from Dan Wetzel, who's about as credible as it comes uh, when it comes to college football stuff, uh, that Michigan and Jim Harbaugh are working on a contract extension that could pay him you know, upwards of $11 million a year. Um, I think there's a couple of notable things with this. I mean, one was then there was a secondary report um, that perhaps the holdup is that Michigan wants it in writing that he will not pursue an NFL job this year. It's not to say next year, the year after that, just this year. Hey, it seems like a pretty fair deal, right? If we're going to do a contract extension right now, we got you for at least one more year, coach, you know, and um, maybe that's the holdup. Um, and if so, then the Harbaugh, you know, the Michigan extension will probably be on hold. If he, he here's why I think this is interesting for two reasons right now. Okay. That puts, if you're Harbaugh, okay, don't you want to know what your opportunities might be now? And if you're in the NFL with coach, you already have coaches, it's kind of a tough situation to have to handle. Um, if you're the Bears right now, are you having behind the scenes talk? Jim Harbaugh is not an NFL employee. There is no 
um, tampering in, in, in this because he's not an NFL employee. You'd be allowed to interview him um, if you had an opening, but, but they don't the have an opening. But does the extension show that Michigan might feel like those conversations are being had? Well, I think if you're Michigan, you're trying to get this done now so that you can close the door to the NFL for this year before these jobs are all open. And there's a couple open already, what um, is which Harbaugh's, might be. What is Harbaugh's current uh, contract right now? In terms of money? Yeah, like they're asking. I, I, don't, the I, don't know what he's, I don't know what he's getting paid right now, but that's the other part of this is $11 million seems to be the reported number that they're trying to up him to. Um, which is the other consideration you have to make if you were the Bears or another NFL team. Are you willing to pay your head coach $11 million a year? Um, and up until this point, the Bears have not been a team that's been willing to pay a head coach that much money. I mean, if you're the Bears... What did they want to pay Saban back in the day? Didn't they want to have Saban here? I think it was $15 an hour. Yeah, yeah. It's the same that they offered all. No, all right, so so listen, listen. If if, if <laughs> m- 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 nice Lawrence, well done. Got gotcha. you. Memo memo to the Bears. If, if you want to make a huge splash right now and excite people, George McCaskey, um, you you call up Jim right now and you say, Hey Jim, we see that Michigan wants to extend you. We'll we'll give you eleven million dollars a year right now to come coach the Bears for the next five years. And uh, you can coach in the Big Ten Championship. You can coach in the college football playoff, rather, if you'd like, or or not. Up to you. And uh, if you say yes, we'll tell Matt Eberflus right now that uh, he is out, and we'll make somebody an interim coach until you're ready to coach the Bears. By the way, if you want to coach this week against the Detroit Lions, go right ahead. You can. You and Justin Fields can have a <laughs> can have a relationship for the rest of the year. I see. No, uh, literally, if you did that, there wouldn't be one Bears fan who didn't like it. No, there wouldn't be. But, you know, in reality, Lan, um, Jim Harbaugh is playing for a national championship here in a couple of weeks. <laughs> so um, yeah, I don't know why he's leaving. he would be leaving Michigan to go coach against the Lions. Unless he wanted, maybe he could be the first coach that could do both at the same time. That would be really yep. impressive. You know, take a couple of weeks with the Bears, go back to the college football playoff. Look, all you got to do, I think, right now, and there's maybe a reason that this is getting floated out, right? Well, first of all, there's always a reason that this stuff gets floated out, just like there was that report a few days ago about Eric Bieniemy and the Bears looking at him, right? There's always a reason, and a lot of times it's to generate more interest. So this could be the, um, all right, we got through the Big Ten Championship game. We got a couple weeks to breathe here. Let's uh, let's put a little floater out there, NFL, that, hey, Michigan's trying to lock me up. Can we start these conversations uh, a little bit? And Jim's under no obligation or needs to be under no uh, rush to sign a contract extension with Michigan. They obviously want Mich- Mich- Michigan obviously wants him back. Um, so I think that all this would take right now to stall this a few weeks is just any NFL team to basically be like, hey, we're interested. Let's figure this out in a month. He Mark doesn't want me to ask this. I'm going to ask it anyway. Derek Schultz put out a report saying that Kevin Warren and Jim Harbaugh don't get along. Have you have, cause I was like waiting for somebody. Cause I figured if there was any truth to them not getting along, we would hear that report from Adam Rittenberg or somebody like you just said, Wetzel that's close to this. Do you, have you ever heard of any kind of relationship, you know, scoop on, on these guys when he worked at the big 10, that being Kevin Warren? No, I mean, and with Derek or Jordan Schultz, Jordan Schultz, whatever his name is. Well, Derek Schultz is my guy down in Indy, so I just want to clarify. Jordan, whatever, Schultz. (laughs) Twitter said it. Charles Schultz. He's talking about Jordan. Jordan Schultz. I got you. Yeah, personally, no, uh, other than the fact that I do know for a fact that uh, a lot of those coaches during COVID, um, and totally understandably so, were annoyed that they couldn't play football because the commissioner said you can't play football. And it, if you guys remember the timeline of those events, I mean, it basically took a revolt from the players um, to get a shortened season out there, which ended up happening. And, um, you know, that's the year bringing this whole conversation full circle that Justin Fields played against Northwestern in the Big Ten championship game. And I remember being down there on the field at Lucas Oil Stadium with Kevin Warren sort of awkwardly walking around the field, uh, trying to shake hands with with people and coaches 
that maybe didn't necessarily want to talk to him there um, because they were there were still some bitter feelings. And that was a long time ago. Um, and I think a lot of, not to get too into the weeds in this conversation, but a lot of the things that we all felt about whatever the restrictions were during COVID, whether it's masks or playing football on opposite ends of the spectrum, we've all learned a lot more. We've all moved on from a lot of that stuff. So to answer your question, have I personally been told anything about Jim Harbaugh and Kevin Warren getting along? No. Do I know for a fact that coaches were annoyed with Kevin Warren four years ago, whatever it's been now? Uh, yes, I do know that. Do I think a lot of those relationships can be mended or already have been mended? Yes. I also think that that's common sense that people have moved on, including Justin Fields, who was on the forefront of all that conversation to help get those players a season. Uh, now Kevin Warren and Justin Fields work on the same team. So I don't necessarily believe that's a huge roadblock. There's this thing called money. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. I think money like can money. solve a lot of problems when it comes to this stuff. And I think if the Bears want to pay Jim Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh will come play or come be the head coach of the Chicago Bears, regardless of who the team president is. Yeah, that's exactly what I was at. $11 million, they're best friends if, if the Bears want to do something along those lines. Uh, Adam. Two super chats. Yeah. Two super chats. Thank you. Bear Down Omaha, $2. <laughs> Hogue talks about the Packers too much. Yeah, Hogue. Okay. <laughs> Bear down, we love you. Uh, <laughs> Dylan Weaver, four ninety nine. How come the RPOs were all to screen passes, no slants up the middle? That's a terrible answer from Getzy. Well, that part I agree with, and that's a more of a um, – I think it's a good point, Dylan, and I was screaming the same thing during the game. Um, I think, you know, having not – drawn up the Bears entire playbook um to me there's just not enough slants in general and I don't know that that's just enough it's just probably not part of their offense enough and I completely agree with that criticism there do we think they don't call enough slants because of the quarterback which would seems ridiculous to me the guy can't throw a slant yes he can yeah I, you know I'm trying to think of it from a coach's perspective one of the things that sometimes annoys me with Justin not necessarily it's his fault, but I had never understood why it happened so much because Justin's got plenty of height. But yeah, he gets he the ball tends batted to down. He yeah. tends to have a lot of balls batted down. He has way too many passes where they're not even batted down. They hit somebody in the helmet. Um, right. So, you know, and that goes back to a deeper discussion about, you know, how shorter quarterbacks do a great job of creating throwing lanes. And sometimes taller quarterbacks just don't worry about it as much because they trust their height and they don't develop that skill. And so sometimes they have batted, they have more batted balls down than you expect. And a slant usually requires you to throw the ball over your offensive lineman or over really tall defensive linemen. Whereas those horizontal passes, behind, you know, at or behind the line of scrimmage. And Justin, by the way, is really good at dropping his arm angle and throwing those sidearm passes well, so is Caleb Williams by the way well, and like you said like the mesh crossers too not even just slants you know like yeah. just under stuff underneath you, you 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 shock me every now and then just for the record when you bust out a mesh oh crosser, my god I'm an, I, it impresses me Adam Schefter breaking news Mark Carmen woke up from a coma in the last hour and said someone's name <laughs> Brad, per Dr. Truth. ladies and gentlemen oh Okay, Dr. Truth. My per guy. Dr. Truth, per, Dr. per Dr. Adam Schefter. I, okay, I thought you just came up with that off the top of your head as some level of Bragg's humor that I had never experienced before, and I was going to say that, you know, humor's not your thing. But, okay. <laughs> Hogue. Maybe you missed the Bagman episode. That was amazing. So shut up. All right, Adam, we'll see you Sunday at uh, 11 for Bears pregame. Lions, Bears, Albert Ramon. Crushed it with the weather, so you don't have to worry about snow when you're driving in, my friend. The rainmaker, my guy. He just came. He came. He came. He came flying in here, baby. Yeah. He, he you was, need to show more respect to meteorologists and the schooling they go to. Oh, I what? could do this. Do you know how much science they learn? They're the smartest broadcasters that exist. We don't have to do crap to get the jobs that we got. I love Dude. my degree that's behind me yeah, here. Carm. The University of Wisconsin Madison, but like, did I really need that? I don't know. There's like three classes there that really helped me prepare for this job, mostly covering the football team, um, which was not a class. 
Those guys go to school for years and years and years and learn science and meteorology, which was also one of my favorite classes at UW Madison, by the way. Uh, and you're just like, I could do it. Anybody I could. can do it. You just got to be a pretty could. face. You listen. They get a computer printout. It's gonna rain. It's gonna be eighty degrees. Go say that on TV and look good and be fun about it. I'm not trying to be Tom Skilling. Well, I'm try. I just want to be the. I want to be the dude that goes out there. But like, it's gonna be sweet out tomorrow. Get your get your get your speedos out and 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 show show what you're made of. Eighty five degrees, sunny. I'm going. I'm I'm gonna do it in San Diego. It's gonna be beautiful tomorrow. I'm Carm. Pay me. Okay. Well, that's a little different. I mean. You might be right about San Diego. Braggs can probably be the weather guy in San Diego. But Albert, our guy, I thought he handled himself with grace with the disrespect you threw his way with back-to-back oh, -back questions. Good disrespect. I, I couldn't have more respect for Albert. Mississippi State, Corpus Christi. I don't know any other weatherman where they went to school in this town. I know Albert. Damn it. I love Albert. <laughs> Rainmaker. All right, guys. Uh, looking forward to Sunday. All right. Bears. You didn't ask me my pick, but I think the Bears are going to win. Well, normally we do our picks in an article, so we didn't know if you wanted to tip your hand. <laughs> I said I think I think they're going to win. I'll give you my official pick in that article, also in my newsletter, which you can read uh, as I do this transition uh, to what our producer wanted us to do out of here. But if you become a diehard right now, you can get my newsletter tomorrow morning with my pick. It's on sale. $20 off. We never do sales like this. And it makes a great Christmas gift. It becomes a sweet box with your t-shirt. Then you get a free t-shirt. You can wrap it, put it right under the Christmas tree. It'd be great. Listen to me. If you, you can't, if you can't afford the 60 bucks, don't spend it. If you can, just be a diehard. We need you. We love you. Do it. You won't regret it. We appreciate you. And Braggs will come over and either like, I don't know, mow your lawn and or, uh, you know, let you come park in my cul-de-sac. Let you come park in his sad-ass cul-de-sac. All right, Hogue, we'll see you Sunday. Bye, guys. Thank Adam you. Hogue, there he is in yeah. all his glory. That's my line. You don't, what are you doing? We all city like the mayor.